show to you the secrets behind the scenes, how they are manufactured. Today, we have invited Yang Jianguo. Madam Yang is the person in charge for this SciTech Museum. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Yang Jianguo. We are in a cultural plaza. It's also a sightseeing destination for the visitors. Here you can find a lot of exhibition areas for the future oriented products. I'm directly attracted by the scene. What are the scenarios of applications can we expect to see here? And what are the functionalities of those robots? And what use can they serve to? We have combined a lot of uh, future-oriented scenarios. For example, the AI plus education, how we can apply the functionality of the AI robots into the education for children. We also have the frameless exhibition screen. Currently, people have to put our children inside a classroom so that they can learn from the teacher and learn from the textbooks only. But in the future, children have more choices in learning, for example, by using this kind of screen. We have the naked eye 3D. We have this whole fan-like screen embedded into the band of LED lights. And when we put all the dynamic photos together for your eyes, it can detect the motion of all those images. And we can also use the robots as the teachers in the future classrooms. So the robots in front of us, those Android robots, they can prepare the texts and also the other manuals for teaching. They can learn things really fast and immediately they can transfer that knowledge to our children. What about our next stop? I'd like to show you the inner structure of our robots. For example, we have an equipment here by which you can see without the skin, without the surface structure, what are these inside. We can find three major parts. For example, the major control unit, the separate control unit, and also the third part is called the smart compliant actuator, or for short, SCA. It's like the inner organs of the robots. Yes, you can say that. For us, we have the muscles. But for muscles of all those bionic robots, they have the sensors instead, and also the actuators. What is the highest level for the robots? There are 68 compliant joints or compliant actuators within one robot. We also have the bionic arms here. We have used nine motors to control the total angle of motion. So these hands can move as the human hands. It can hold something, can grab something really firmly within the palms. And you can see the flexibility of those bionic arms. We have also realized several rounds of iteration. We have also mentioned just now the smart compliant actuator at CA. For the other products, they are confined within a range of motion. But for this exact product developed by our side, it can, it can demonstrate a much greater degree of flexibility. What about these? It's a kind of service. We can first of all scan the body information of a certain personnel. For example, inside this room, those are tailored products. We have captured the facial expression and also the other body-related features of a certain person. For example, I've discovered Albert Einstein here. This is the dynamic demonstration of this Albert Einstein-like bionic robot. We have put the focus on the facial expressions. You know that for a human being, we can 
realize 55,000 different facial expressions. So you can also find similar demonstrations with these bionic robots. He can accomplish a lot of different facial expressions. For example, he can pout. He can also do the winking, etc. He can also move the muscles on the face. Later on, I'll also show you the demonstration of these android robots in the form of Albert Einstein. Hello, everyone. My name is Robot I. Albert Einstein. In my life of study, I've been dealing with the formulas and data. I've, dis I've discovered that in the past, we used to have descriptions of the universe and the relationship between human and universe in a way that is not that exact. He has really flexible facial expressions, and they look very natural on the face of this android robot. We have designed all that process, the posture change, and also the movement change. He can even sit down. and. With this bionic robot, he has 68 SCA within the body, within the structure. It's not the first time for me to see this android robot, this bionic robot. He has visited a lot of places, for example, the World Robotics Conference held in Beijing last year, and also the other diverse events. He's also been on stage to tell people about his discoveries of the theories. This is Madame Curie, a Nobel Prize, Nobel Prize winner. And that is Edison, who has invented the bulb of the lamp, the light bulbs. So you have another copy of Albert Einstein like bionic robots. What's the difference between the two models? One is used for the business trip, another is for the in house demonstration. And we are all familiar with this one. He is called Lu Xun, a very famous literate, a man of letters. He would tell us his life and also his works. I've studied in Japan as a student of medical sciences. I noticed that to treat the society of China, to cure the body is not enough. We also have to cure the mindset of the people. I feel so sad that our society has been colonized by the invaders. So with all those bionic robots, we can share the story and the history events with our children when they come to visit our museum. And when those bionic robots tell their stories, they can also show us the corresponding facial expressions, for example, the winking and the shaking body, and also different kinds of emotions, happiness, sadness, etc. We have pre-designed all the winks and the other movements of the muscle in order to better accompany the whole story. We have also made a model look like a very famous host of TV shows. 
Mr. Jiang Changjian, and we have also Mr. Newton here holding an apple with his hands. Who also do the explanation on scientific theories, right? Yes, until now we have covered a lot of famous people in history from the areas of politics, science and development of technologies, and also literature and culture. Usually the younger generation can hear a lot of words of hope and inspiration from the mouth of those bionic robots in the shape of famous personals in the past. And this is very famous Professor Yuan Longping, the father of hybrid rice. And I know this one. She's been used as a volunteer model on the street of Dalian. Last year, we had witnessed the blow of COVID-19 in our city. And now this robot is speaking the dialect of the city of Dalian. And she's giving instructions about nuclear acid tests, and she's encouraging people to wear the masks when they come for the test. So last year, during the outbreak of the COVID-19 in the city of Dalian, we put this model on the street so that people can be better informed and we can also save a lot of energy from the side of the medics and also the organizers. That is very cute. You know that the robots they are very suitable for this kind of situation. They are not afraid of the cold weather, and they are not afraid of the virus of COVID. And usually, if we can have something fun on the spot of the nuclear acid test, people would feel relieved, and we can also ease their mental tensions. Now, I've noticed some joints. Could you please share with us the details of the structure? We have used a resign to do the skin part. We also have the inner structure for the joint. We have also developed the bionic silicon to make the skin look much more closer to a human skin. And we have also designed the makeup of this model. During the manufacturing process, do you have something else about the highlight? You can find a lot of flexibility with this model. Let's take the example of a female. For the arm of a female, there are a lot of joints. And for a female like robots, you have to insert a lot of servo drives inside so that you can enable the operation of all those SCA. Apart from that use as a volunteer during the pandemic period, what are the other possibilities of its functionality? Recently, we have used it as a host of the event, of a conference, and also the person to explain the stories of exhibitions to the visitors. I've noticed a high degree of flexibility of the joints. I believe that there are more than 40 points of flexibility. What about this part? It's turning around, right? Yes, exactly. So this model is capable of lifting its, his arm, her arm and also turning around. What about this area? It's actually the lab of R&D. We are doing the design of the AI brain for the bionic robots. Just now we have already visited all those finished products, and now all those 
separate parts, they are in the process of manufacturing and design. First of all, you can take off your face masks and we can scan your face. We can do the modeling of your geometry of the face. Currently, I'm nodding and I'm shaking shaking the head and I can open my mouth. And also I can raise my eyebrows. I can also turn my eyes and I can pout. So you can see that simultaneously this model, the head of the robot can imitate my face expressions and also the movement of my head. You know that when human beings do their facial expressions, they are actually mobilizing their muscles on the face. So we also have to mobilize something inside this model For different features from different people, you also have to pay attention to the texture of their skin and also the tones of color. You can also touch it. It's very soft. What about the role played by the system? In the future, it will be commercialized in the market. Currently, in the supermarkets or in the shopping mall, we can already mobilize the service of the robots. Sometimes when we meet a very difficult customer, we can combine the robot and some remote control performed by a real human service. So with this equipment, it can capture all the facial expressions. Yes, exactly. It can capture not only your facial expressions, but also your body movements. We have not only the robots on the site, but also behind the scenes, we can also add up with some manned service. What about this? That one is really cool. It's used for the intelligence dialogue. We have the connected search and question answering. For a certain scenario and environment, you can also preset the questions and answers. It can record your sound and also transfer your sound into a male sound. Let me try. Friends of the CCTV, now I can see that the sound of voice has been transformed into a male voice. And we can also do some tricks with the feelings expressed. You know that from one scenario to another, we have to readjust and readapt the feelings transmitted by the sound itself. Hello, what's your name? I'm your new friend. I'm a bionic robot. What is about the weather? Which city are you in? I'm in Dalian. We have a sunny day, but it would become a little bit cloudy later in the day. It has a temperature of minus one to four degrees Celsius, and you can also feel other, uh, you can feel rather strong wind in the day. May I continue with some more questions? What kind of spots of entertainment can we find nearby? You can find a very decent restaurant. 
I like their dishes. So the dialogue with this model feels really unreal. So if you ask this model, what about the weather today? Then immediately, this model would respond, "What's your position? Where? Which city are you in?" Then immediately. The inner system is connected with the internet, and then backstage, this model is doing some search on the web. What about the future application of this model of this use? Because our focus of researches and development is for the service side, those robots for services. In the future, they may be put on the spots like the reception desk of a hotel or in other venues. But just now, I'm talking really fast, and this robot can recognize all the words. We have developed this scale and capacity with Microsoft on the basis. Of that technology from Microsoft, we have also added some more functions. You can feel that you are doing an actual dialogue and conversation with a real person. For this voice recognition, we already have rather mature technology on the market. The most interesting part with this model is that we can correspond the shape of the mouth with the sound this model is making. A moment ago, we have um, visited a model for the facial expression, and this part is for the body part. So you can see the inner structure of all those bionic robots. For example, when we have this area for the joints, we would insert a smart compliance actuator, the ATCA, and we can also design with our computer the movements and also the directions and degrees of the movements of all those parts. That is the engine, the motor part, right? Yes, and also for the fingers. We have the linear parts here because they have to be really flexible. This desk is about the movement of the hand and arm, and here also another desk for the electronics. For your side, Tak Mizian, for future, how many sections do you have? We have one section for the demonstration for the public. For example, the demonstration of all those finished products, and also we have demonstrated some art installations. And another part is a lab for research and development. We are the only place to o to be open to the public to show what is behind the scenes for the manufacturing of the bionic robots. I think they are. Quite real, and especially I love this model of bionic robots in the shape of Albert Einstein. He's so cute. We would like to demonstrate all his personality and the character of this person. What about the globe? Maybe first we can hear out this lady explaining all the details here. For that globe over there, we can imitate the planets. For example, the Earth, the Mars, etc. So just now, I would like to draw your attention to equipment, but immediately this equipment has left us and fled. What about these? They are the second generation of the products. So they are older than the models that we have witnessed just now. What we have experienced just now, they are the fourth generation already. 
Back to 2007, we have just started our research of this kind of robots. In the very beginning, we have only designed the hat part, and for the second generation of the products, we have added the arms and the other body parts. But you can see that the degree of the flexibility of the body parts is not satisfying. Later on, we have developed the third generation. We added, for example, the texture of the skins. And this is another naked eye technology plus AI. It's a robotic arm. Because it's also frameless, it looks like that right in mid-air, there's something floating there. This is Professor Hawking. What about this screen? It's the combination of the projection of images and also the naked eye technology, naked eye 3D. We are building up this world of universe presented by Dr. Hawking. Here we are demonstrating the sound of Professor, and also we have combined with all the images. With this bionic robots, we can see the movement of the mouth and also movement of the hands. And we also have this sound system. It feels like we are seated inside a cinema. This part again, we have applied the naked eye 3D technology. And also, I would like to show you another equipment here. This is a robot for the patrolling. This robot can take your temperature of body, can measure the body temperature of all the visitors. It can also supervise and monitor the inner temperature. If this robot runs into someone that is not wearing the mask, the robot can even urge this visitor to put on the mask immediately. So that robot is used for the countermeasure against COVID-19. That's very interesting. We have also imitated some scenarios from the future. For example, that beating heart and also the operation, the surgery theater here. In the future, we may use the robotic arms to perform the surgeries. And what about the inspirations of all those technologies for solving tomorrow's problem? We have the robotic arms named Da Vinci hand to do the surgeries. With a human hand, there's also a very small possibility of shaking in some moments during the surgery. But with a robotic arm, you have no problem of this kind. And with a robotic arm, it can be more precise too during the surgery. You also have a screen here that can present in real time the statistics of this human body, the status of the patient. And what about this dynamic screen? It's also a kind of artistic installation here. So Jianguo, just now we have visited this part of demonstration. Maybe now we can check out the manufacturing part. Yes, of course. For example, this is the 3D scanning, the very first step of the manufacturing of this bionic robot. So we have a real human being inside. 
the 3D scanning, the very first part of the manufacturing of our bionic robots, and also it's the most important part. We have a scanner here as using the laser to scan all the details of this human body and by the terminal of the computer, we collect all the data and we can do the improvement. And later on, we can continue with the modeling. So for any one, we can build up a bionic robot in their own shape. Today, we are talking about the metaverse and also the NFT. So. Our interest is also focused on the registration in a digital way, the body features and statistics. In the past, we only have like the cameras to record or register your look and also your body status. But in the future, we have much more intelligent way to record everything about your body and also your status quo. After the upgrading of this modeling, we have the 3D printing machine. What about those obstacles? Here you can see floating up, we have uh, different joints, the body parts, and they will be used for the next step of the manufacturing. The whole machine is called the 3D printer. We have used the material called the resin to make all the different body parts. We have designed a lot of things because you cannot find similar products in the market, so we have decided to design it ourselves. We have applied this lightweight resin. So you can also call it the skeleton of the robot. Yes, maybe to some extent. And moving forward, we're about to see the part for the assembly of the parts. So that robot for the patrolling is working really hard. Here is the assembly line for the robot. Is that the last step of the manufacturing? For the manufacturing part, for the manufacturing process, it is. Here we have applied an industrial robot to put all the body parts of the bionic robots together to assembly. In the factories of Huawei and the factories of Tesla. Today, they have used a lot of industrial robots to do the assembly of the products. So here, we are following the same philosophy. We're using industrial robots to form the bionic robots. Since we have already produced with that lightweight resin body parts. Now it's the turn of all those industrial robots to put the body parts together to make the bionic robots. So remember just now we have checked out that 3D printer by using the information we have collected from the 3D scanning. And now it's the job of those industrial robots to do the assembly. And the next step I'm about to show you Something else, this is the spatial cabin inside. We have a model of the bionic robot. You can feel the skin of this model. Actually, the texture of the skin has also been a great challenge during our research and development. I've also noticed the hands. You can even notice the texture of the skin and some wrinkles and also the blood vessels and some other parts, including the makeup. They are realized by our 
technicians too, and also the hair. For that blood vessels, we have also designed the direction of all those blood vessels. And inside the SciTech Museum, I can notice some visitors here. Yes, of course, because we are open to the public. Children, they are always welcome to visit our museum. And you can see a lot of parents, they would bring their children here. Last year, we have also won a lot of prizes at national level. In total, only 10 institutes in the country have received that award. So that is very precious for us. And you're also combining the technology development with the tourism. That robot is for the delivery of goods, for example, the bottled water to the visitors. What about this area? This is the battling field with interaction. We are using this control sticks, the joysticks, to control the movement of the mini version of robots. And interestingly, you can also move around your body, then you can control the directions of all those mini robots on the field. So that is a game. We have two parties, the red party and also the blue party, and they are fighting against each other. If the visitors here, they can try this out. It's a very interesting gaming project. I believe that children would really fall in love with this project. It's also the interaction between the machinery and also the humankind. Just now, we have visited that dialogue system and also the facial expression following simulation is also an example of the human-machine interaction. What about the future direction of development of our bionic robots? The mission of our company is to enrich people's daily life. We hope that our product of bionic robots could go into the daily life of people. We will not keep them in our cupboards or in our cabins. Instead, we would like to insert them into the daily life of ordinary people. And that's also the reason why we have decided to set up this SciTech Museum so people can get to know those robots better. What about the future iteration and upgrades? Nowadays, we have already updated our bionic robots to the fourth generation. In the future, we're about to increase the degree of mobility of our robots. So today, all those presented robots, they are mainly restricted to a certain area. And in the future, they can move more freely. So today in our live show together, we have revealed the secrets behind the scenes for you to know the details about the bionic robots and how they are made and how they are composed of. So in the future, they will become a more important part of our life. Thank you for staying with us today.